Tonight on Border Security. These passengers are good friends, so why did they separate at the border? This is the uh, big bertha. Looks like the real McCoy. Ever wondered what happens to seized items? You're about to find out. He's going to give you a last chance. Any more food in the other bags? And truckloads of food at quarantine. Oh dear, that's food. And it just keeps coming. Customs officers get to see a lot on their shift, and rarely are they shocked by what passengers have in their luggage. How long were you overseas? Two weeks, did you say? Two weeks, yep. Oh, this is Sam, that one. OK. Yankee 1, Yankee 1, Echo 15. Yankee 1. Yeah, Mick, we got more memorabilia here. While searching the bag, Jeff has uncovered a secret stash of hardcore pornography. Where did you purchase these CDs from, sir? Oh, it's my friend. Victor. Your friend? Yes. Did he give them to you? Yes. Where did he give them to you at? Uh, Westman, where? Shanghai. Yeah. Shanghai? Yes. yes. Did he give them to you as a gift? Yes. Uh, the um, passenger has a number of DVDs that may or may not be allowed to enter the country. At this present stage, one of my colleagues is just viewing the DVDs and he'll get back to me on the classification. Yeah, Jeff. There's about 10 bestiality ones, mate. We've still got about another 20 or 30 to go through. It's not illegal to bring sexually explicit material into the country. There are just limits to what is considered offensive. And this man may have crossed that line. And pay attention to what I have to tell you now, sir, OK? Yes. I caution you that you do not have to say or do anything, but anything you do say or do may be used as evidence. Do you understand what I just said? Yes. OK, no worries. At Sydney Airport, thousands of passengers will arrive before lunchtime. And two in particular are attracting a higher than normal degree of attention. Miss Lam and Miss Nguyen, two friends returning from Vietnam, are trying to make it look like they're strangers. Uh, we've got two females here. They travel out together. They've come back in, split up, went through the immigration line separately, went to opposite ends of the carousel. So that in itself is a bit sus. There's a couple of other things we're not happy with. Officers now need to find out what these two passengers are up to. It's never easy when a customs officer is rummaging through your dirty laundry. If they find something, it's their job to investigate. A lot of pornography can be brought in legally. There's some that's illegal. And this gentleman's got quite a lot of CDs depicting a whole range of different things. Some are OK at the moment. That one's OK. Out of about 50, the rest have been um, deemed to be um, offensive to the public. From the body language as you go through, you probably see non-consent as well, so that's out. I don't even need to look at the rest of it. Michael has special training from the Office of Film and Literature Classification. Well, yeah, well, it's not illegal to own a lot of porn. It's just illegal to own this type of porn. Bringing hardcore pornographic material across the border can result in a 10-year prison sentence and a $275,000 fine. Over in quarantine, it is Rita's morning patrol. She has just started her watch and is contending with a family who has brought in enough food to feed a small army. And that's fish paste. And that's another fish. You like your fish? That's another fish. It's another fish. And dried fish. Fish! Prawns. Is there any more fish left in the sea? Although seafood poses no quarantine risk, not all of the family's food has been declared. That's food. No, this is dried, dried uh, flour. Dried flour. And do you eat it? So it's food. Any more food here? That's not medical. Oh dear. That's food. Rita has had enough. This is a legal document. Huh? You have declared food. I did. But when I ask what other food there is, you should show me the other food. Otherwise, you will be giving me a false declaration. Yeah, in a right. sense, you're telling me, no, I don't have food in that bag. But yes, we do have food in the other bag. There would be a fine of $220 for false declaration. Okay? 
So, I'm just going to give you a last chance. Any more food in the other bags? Meanwhile, over in customs, officers want to know more about the two women who have just returned from Vietnam. Miss Lam has been taken into an interview room for more detailed questioning. Although she resides permanently in Australia, she doesn't speak English fluently, so a telephone interpreter is being used. Carol, where's she gone? Do you know where your female friend is now? So do you know if she is back or still in Vietnam? Interesting answers, especially considering officers know that Mr Nguyen is only standing about 10 metres away. Bringing in prohibited explicit material, which has been refused classification in Australia, can lead to fines of over $100,000. We've classified all the information that gentleman had on all the discs. Some were unable to read, so we're going to hold those anyway. We'll be counting all these and itemising them to be seized, and then referring it on to investigations for each. What's happening? Non-consent? Yes. Bestiality? Yes. And these unable to read, so we're going to take them anyway. Oh, OK. All those are OK? Yes. It took quite a while, but got through the whole lot. Yeah. Just been notified that the material that is that is brought into Australia is, is pretty bad. Uh, so we're going to get a full picture on everything that is brought in. We're going to get a full picture of the passenger himself. Come in here, and I'll go and get you a drink of water, OK? Just take, pull up a, a suit. The passenger was questioned for several hours and was eventually allowed to go. The offensive DVDs were confiscated and destroyed. One triple four eight BB gun. Every few weeks, prohibited items like the pornographic DVDs seized by customs are catalogued, then incinerated. Yep, that's correct. Deadly knives and other weapons that enter through airports and mail centres around the country are just the beginning. You'd be amazed at what some people try to bring across the border. This is what's called a trench knife. If you wanted to wage a war, this would be a good place to start. BB guns like these are sold overseas as toys, but customs consider them anything but. Penalties for importing prohibited goods like these can be high, including fines of up to $250,000 and 10 years in jail. I need to have a look at the other green bags because I need to make sure that you're not giving me a false declaration and you're positive there's no food in the other bags. This is it. Rita is giving the family one last chance to declare any more food. What's this? Maybe. What is it? Throw it away. But what is it? Mango. Mango. Uh, I know. Mango. Mango. That's food. As the bags keep coming, so does the food. That's not tea. Oh. oh yeah. That's food. Back at the customs bond store, officers are still dealing with fakes. They will copy Callaway golf clubs, for instance, uh, and they go right down to the right down to minute detail. Is this the uh, big Bertha? Yeah. Looks like the real McCoy. In this case, yes, it is a great big Bertha driver, uh, and they have everything right except that the refinements of the club aren't there. A real club won't break like that. It just won't break like that. They'll bend. They'll bend. Customs' job is to find these fakes before they make it onto Australian streets. But sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference between a fake and the real thing. Gucci wallets. Gucci. Wallets. How many have we got? 35. 35. Yeah. Gucci wallets. Yep. Three tonnes of catalogued goods later, and customs job is nearly finished. Next stop, the incinerator. Thai Airways Flight 991 has just arrived from Bangkok, 
carrying passengers from connecting flights across Asia. This is your name and your signature? Yes. Do you understand the questions on the card? Because I just... Thak's been on holiday in Asia, staying with a friend. Alarm bells started ringing because the passenger's ticket purchase was unusual. See, so your friend paid for this? Huh? Why did your friend buy the ticket and not yourself? Huh? Why did your Thak's had a short stopover in Bangkok on his way from Vietnam, a popular route for drug couriers, and Customs wants to know more about the friend he says bought his ticket. Birth date? Birthday, I didn't know where he was. I don't know where his birthday is. You I, don't know? I, I just tell you what. How old where is he? he? Huh? How old? 43 something. While the passenger is being questioned, officers are checking one particular item he's brought in. It looks like a picture, but those orange areas on the x ray indicate possible organic material. Not what you'd expect inside an artwork. There is powder in there just to try to uh, move it around a little bit see if the image changes in shape. So officers open it to get a better look. It contains four cheaply made pictures. There's no visible signs of uh, being tampered with. Customs officers are used to the devious methods of concealment used by drug smugglers. They're pretty clever though when they make them that, uh, they can make it look new. We're getting that same division. Might have to drill it, see if there's anything inside it. Before drilling the pictures, they do a drug swab. In customs, officers are questioning two passengers from Vietnam. Their behaviour getting off the flight was suspicious, and now their stories aren't matching up. This one has finally admitted she's travelled with us, this passenger. This one is still denying full knowledge. Customs officers have more than enough grounds to conduct a frisk search of Miss Nguyen. What we'd like to do is to pat you down, OK? All right, not going to go over any, any skin or anything like that. Not removing any clothing, OK? Both of them are wearing very tight clothing, so it could be just simply if there's anything around the ankles or anything like that. Into a room. The passenger has elected to have the frisk conducted in a private room. It's nearly the end of the line for the prohibited items that Customs has seized at airports and mail centres around the country. OK, as you can see, we've got uh, the goods that we've loaded in at uh, custom store, we've got uh, weapons, we've got medicines, we've got blowpipes, we've got Louis Vuitton bags, we've got a multitude of items going for uh, destruction today. This will also end the myth about uh, the customs officers take all these things home. Seeing this being destroyed today and uh, me as a witness uh, with 34 years experience, I'm not going to lose my job over one uh, DVD or a Louis Vuitton bag. I'm here to see it destroyed, and uh, that's what's going to happen today. Every year, Customs seizes hundreds of thousands of prohibited items. Most of these are destroyed. <laughs> Meanwhile, a frisk search by a female officer on the passengers returning from Vietnam has turned up empty. But that doesn't mean officers are finished with their investigations just yet. We think her, uh, the purpose of a visit is not just a plain um, a visit to family. Uh, there's some other reason, so that's the only thing we can think of is drugs. And uh, because we didn't find anything in the bags, now the only, only other thing left is uh, searching her body and then probably even internal. An internal concealment is nothing new to customs, and there are some signs they can look out for. Uh, looks like she's burping and coughing a bit. If you've swallowed something, say it's um, say wrapped up in something, even plastic, or these days they use condoms or whatever. And then if she, just to, sometimes your body reacts and it wants to throw it out. And while Miss Lamb isn't displaying any of these signs, there's also the possibility that she may be what's known in the trade as an overseer. They'll stay clear of the actual drug courier, but they will watch them to make sure and see if they get through all right, and then they'll go outside. And if they get through okay, they'll just meet up with them somewhere else. If they don't get through, then they'll tell whoever's organising it, or if they're organising it, they'll just keep going, they'll just leave behind. Over in quarantine, Rita is still finding food inside various bags belonging to the family. But when you actually try sort of 
to conceal it and not tell me that I've only got food in that, oh, I'm not too sure or whatever. You packed your bag, so you must know. Yeah. Virtually, you had food in every bag. Hey? Any more food do you think that you have? No, no, no. I mean, I've checked every bag no, except that box. Do you have food in that box? Yeah, open it. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Oh, Tiger bar. Yep, that's um. fine. Jeez, that's the only box that we didn't find any food in there. How did you miss that? Nothing, huh? Every bag you had food and you only want to admit the two bags and when I asked, like, all you have to do is just be honest with us. And they're all food that you could have. Do you know what I mean? This is a legal document. You signed it to say yes. And when I ask you the verbal questions, you must tell me, this is what I have in those bags, OK? Thank you. If the family fails to declare items of quarantine concern next time they arrive in Australia, they could be prosecuted and fined more than $60,000. While over in customs... When I x-ray it, yeah. seems to be something inside it. Fax says he bought the pictures in Saigon for a friend here. But an x-ray and a trace particle test suggest there may be drugs packed inside. I still have some concerns about those prints. Pardon? Those prints? Yeah. Who are they for? Huh? Who are they for? Lewis. Lewis? Yeah, Lewis. Lewis. How do you know Lewis? It's my friend long time. My boss. Do you mind if I put a drill hole in the back here? Yeah, yeah, How about can, a drill yeah. somewhere okay, there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just make yeah, a little yeah, yeah. drill hole yeah, and see if there's anything right. in yeah. there. Officers are determined to find out what's inside those pictures. Back in customs, Jeff and Lee are getting a closer look inside Thack's suspect pictures. When we swabbed it before, we got uh, results for ephedrine. Ephedrine um, is evident in uh, cold flu tablets, and uh, they also use it for the manufacture of uh, ecstasy. Ap apart from seeing the segments in the wood, his, uh, his whole demeanour is um, hes very nervous. He's uh, clenching his fist a lot. Lee also does a chemical narcotics test. Uh, shouldn't be any colour produced there. If I break the right hand pill now, if there's anything in there, it should go a bluey colour. After drilling the suspect pictures and doing more drug tests, it seems these items are only made up of chipboard. Well, we've got readings, we've got really good readings, and uh, we've drilled it, we've checked it, there's absolutely nothing in the picture. So uh, we've still got those drug readings, so I think we're going to need to do a body search. Just a frisk, just to see if he's got anything on his body. I've got some concerns. Yeah. OK, I just want to see if you're carrying anything on your okay, body. Yeah, okay. Yeah. OK. If you could have a read of uh, one of these two cards. Everything out of your pockets, place everything out of your pockets, obviously the barrier. He's got business cards in there, but most of the cards we're writing on are extra. They sometimes can stick um, small layers of um, narcotics in in the uh, in the layers of the shoes, underneath the soles of the shoes. Um, so by x-raying you get an idea of whether there's anything there or not, and it appears. There isn't. Thanks, mate. I'll just pack it up for you so it doesn't uh, break. You're free to go. Despite drug readings on his belongings, Thack is allowed to go home. We were pretty sure that uh, there was something in those pictures. Uh, as it turns out, there wasn't. Let's do it. <laughs> in another part of customs, officers have had a breakthrough. This one's only just coming around with a story about a package. She couldn't afford the trip. She couldn't, she saved up and managed to afford the trip but couldn't pay for the bags. Then she was told if she carried a package through for somebody else, they'd pay for her baggage. All her bags have been searched and she's been frisked. So if she is carrying something illegal, 
there's only one place it could be. We've got the Australian Federal Police on station and we've advised them that we'd like to send somebody for an internal. So they've arrived and they're looking at, we've done statements up for them, so all the facts are there. They're reading over the statements, we're presenting everything to them and if they're happy, if they agree with what we've presented, they'll take them to the hospital where a doctor will perform the internal, which is usually either a CAT scan or an X-ray or both. And then they'll take it further if they find anything. A passenger must give consent before an internal exam can be conducted, and both passengers have done this. Cool? To Customs, this doesn't indicate anything. Hey, what's, what's it doesn't indicate at all. We've had people that have been loaded that are just happy, yeah, quick, I'll sign up. And yet, maybe they think they'll bluff us by saying, yes, I'm ready to sign up. I'll sign up now, let's go. They're keen, let's get out the door and let's go to the hospital. At the hospital, both women were found to have swallowed packages of heroin with a combined weight of 220 grams. The street value of these drugs could be as much as $143,000. Miss Lamb was sentenced to five years and Miss Neguin was sentenced to five years and nine months. United States. You will be going back to the United States because that's where you came from. If you wrote a book about uh, the weird things people do, no one would believe you. But, do we... but what is it? It's a king cobra. People do strange things. <laughs> you need to pay this. Oh. Yeah. Why am I being treated as a terrorist or a drug smuggler or trafficker? Yeah. It's not a court hearing. And even though I haven't met her, we both love each other very much. Ask him why you're sweating so much. We believe you have committed an offence. 